Tesla's demand has skyrocketed in last two years, and more people are now switching to Tesla. But, buying a Tesla can be a bit confusing if you are not properly aware of what you are going to get. Tesla updates its vehicles regularly, so it could become confusing sometimes on which options to go for. So, today we are going to share 7 things that you don't want to do when ordering your Model Y or Model 3. Let's get into all the details. So let's get started. First and foremost thing to do is get the color that you actually want. Tesla charges between $1,000 and $2,000 for their color options, depending on which one you select. The white and silver color option is available with the base price of the car. The white color had a lot of mismatch issues in the past. It wasn't just a rear bumper that you probably heard most about, but also sometimes the doors didn't match, but this issue has been resolved now. It's not perfect, and it's hard to get this particular white to be perfect, but it is a lot better than it used to be at the beginning of production of the Model Y. So get that color that you want, and the reason is, every time you see the color you wish you would have got, you're gonna wish that you had it. So spend the extra thousand or two thousand if you want red or get the color that you want. While we're talking about color, we have to talk about the interior also. The white interior option, in our opinion, is absolutely gorgeous. We know there's a bunch of you who share that opinion, however there are some of you who do not like the white. But if you do like the white, but you're afraid of getting white, thinking that it might be very difficult to maintain, we would suggest you to go for it, and here's why. The first thing you can do is put the ceramic coat product on the interior, and it will add an extra layer of protection for those white seats. In addition, even if there is some dirt on these white seats, it can easily be cleaned up with baby wipes. But after putting the ceramic coat on, there will not be a stain that you won't be able to remove with just baby wipes. People having kids are generally worried about getting the white interior, even though they want it, when they order their car. The reason behind this is obvious, as they are worried about ruining that white interior, but keeping the white interior clean can be very easy. We haven't seen owners facing any issues at all with that beautiful white interior. So, we highly recommend to go ahead, pull the trigger, spend the extra thousand dollars, and get that gorgeous white interior, if you like it. Now, let's talk about the wheels. We highly recommend that you order the car with the standard Gemini wheels, and here's why. Instead of spending $2,000 on getting the induction wheels, you can forego those $2,000 and buy an aftermarket set and have a second set of wheels. Now, we have seen these take-off induction wheels between $2,000 with no tires on them and $2,500 with tires on them. Now, they can vary up and down from there, but for about $2,500, you can have the induction wheels, if that's what you really want, which look great, or for $2,500 roughly, you can get an aftermarket set of wheels and tires. Now you've got two sets of wheels for $500 more than just having the induction wheels. The reason why this is helpful is, if you live in a cold climate, you now have a winter set, if you do road trips, you now have a road trip set. So you can have your nice wheels on for day-to-day -day stuff, or during the summer time, and then in the winter, or during road trips, put on the Gemini wheels. Those two sets of wheels are gonna pay themselves off, and having two sets of tires, that'll wear a little bit different, and it should be a little bit more efficient and more comfortable on the highway as well. Now, for those who are looking to buy a Model Y and are considering the seven-passenger configuration, this section is particularly for them. Those of you who are on the fence, especially to get the seven-seat configuration, you are not giving up a lot of space to have the flexibility of those seats. In fact, the only thing that you're giving up is a very shallow sub-trunk that's right where those seats go. It's a very small space, only limited things are ever going to fit in there. You can fit the charging cable in there, but nothing bigger than that, so it's really not a lot of useful storage, and you would barely ever use it. 
Now the regular sub trunk is still the same size, so you still have the same amount of storage outside of that front little compartment. Now, here's where things get interesting. The seven seat configuration does change things up in more than just that third row. The second row now moves forward and back when you're not using that third row. You can actually move the second seats forward a bit and gain additional cargo space compared to the fixed seats on the five passenger configuration. You will still be able to sit people in those seats, so technically, although you lose that small shallow sub trunk, you gain quite a bit of space by being able to move those front seats forward. There's actually more space in the seven seat configuration than there is in the five seats as it provides that flexibility to move your second row seats. Now, speaking about the third row, this third row is not for adults. You can technically squeeze yourself in there, however, even a person with 5 foot 6 will find his head rest right up against the trim. So any kind of bumpy ride, or in an event of accident, your head is in a very bad place. This is not for adults, but what this is for, is for children, preferably children in booster seats, or no car seats at all. Those would be the best fit for this third row. So it's not a great space for many uses, other than an emergency, or if you needed to squeeze one adult back there, when they could just lean over a bit. It's not very easy to get in and out for an adult, but it does have its uses, and it's nice to have. Coming to the next one, is ordering full self-driving right off the bat. Now this is going to be a little bit controversial, but we would like to discuss it. Now that full self-driving subscription is available for $200 a month, you can try it. So for 200 bucks, activate it, and for one month you can try full self-driving to see if you actually would use it on a day-to-day -day basis. What we think is, you're going to find autopilot is actually going to work out well for most of you. Full self-driving at $12,000 is a ton of money, and it's still not completely ready. The beta release is now available for public, so push that FSD beta button, achieve a proper safety score, try it out and decide whether you require it or not. You really need to think about it before you spend $12,000 if you are going to use this enough to justify $12,000, so think really hard about that. We recommend for going full self-driving at time of order, unless you're really worried about prices of full self-driving continue to increase, which they very well could, and you don't anticipate taking delivery before those increases. So keep that in mind, and we recommend shelling out 200 bucks at time of delivery, try it out, and decide if $12,000 could be spent better elsewhere. Now, as we're on the topic of full self-driving, don't miss out on enhanced autopilot. Now that full self-driving is ready and fully available to the public, we think they're going to have pretty much figured out what the demand is for the system and we think they could bring back enhanced autopilot. In some markets across globe, enhanced autopilot is available right now. Late in 2020, they did release enhanced autopilot as an option for two weeks only and it was $4,000. Enhanced Autopilot is everything that full self-driving is, except for full self-driving on city streets and stoplight and stop sign control, that's it. Everything else, like lane change, navigate on autopilot, summon, all those other features that are actually useful are included in Enhanced Autopilot. So if it does come back out, don't miss your opportunity to get that, instead of full self-driving. Of course, some of you are still going to want full self-driving and more power to you. Moving to the next one, if you are waiting for the 4680 cells, don't buy now. At Tesla's Cyber Rodeo event recently, Tesla announced the deliveries of the new Model Y equipped with 4680 cells. But the deliveries that Tesla is giving right now is only to its employees. Along with that, Tesla announced a new Model Y variant standard range, which is equipped with new 4680 cells and providing a range of 279 miles. So Tesla has started its production at Giga Texas with this new Model Y variant. But there's still no way for general people to buy this new 4680 equipped Model Y variant. So if 279 miles of range is enough for you, 
you should wait for this new variant. Now talking about the long range and performance variant, there's no confirmed news on when these variants will come out with 4680 cells. Recent news have also indicated that Tesla also plans to produce Model Ys with both 4680 and 2170 cells at Giga Texas. So it's clear that Tesla is not fully prepared to ramp up production of these new 4680 cells. This was indicated recently when Tesla announced that it had produced its 1 millionth battery cell. 1 million battery cells can only power 1000 to 1200 Model Ys. So we think Tesla is initially going to produce this new variant with 4680 cells that would use less cells and ultimately help in powering more cars. So, if you are only interested in getting the benefits of the 4680 cells, do not buy now. With that in mind, next think about getting as much range as you can afford. Of course if you're considering a Model Y right now, your only option is long range, however that could be changing soon with the return of the standard range Model Y. But if you're buying a Model 3, if you can afford the difference between the long range and the standard range, get the long range. You are not likely to ever be in a situation where you're going to say to yourself, I wish I had less range. On the flip side, you may find yourself in a position where you say, I wish I had more range. Now this is going to be most obvious when you're on road trips and the reason is, supercharging is much faster with a long-range battery pack than the standard range. So you're going to have to stop more, and it's not going to charge as fast as it does in the long range. Charging speeds are capped for the standard range, and as the long range gets full access to full charging speeds, we are anticipating to see the V3 supercharging network to increase charging speeds with the existing infrastructure in place. That's not likely going to help any standard range models, but the long range models could start to tap into just a little bit more speed in charging. Next one is, if you are wanting to protect the front of the car, do it right away. It's not so much a paint quality issue from Tesla that some people talk about. It's more of the fact that it's literally a flat painted surface that's plowing through the wind and everything on the road that's getting kicked up and making contact with that front bumper, and that's why PPF is so popular with Teslas, and that's why we recommend getting it. Now, it is very expensive to have this done professionally, and there are also some DIY kits out there. There are some great DIY kits out there in the market, but we would still suggest to go with a professional one. So, whether you want to just do the front end, just do the bumper, do a partial front end, or the entire car, you can choose any of them according to your budget. If you are on a tight budget, just go for the bumper or the partial front end, as this is where your car will need the most protection. Installing a PPF is highly recommended to keep your car's paint safe. Also, don't forget to protect the inside by getting good floor mats right away before you take delivery. Keep that interior nice and pristine, as it's such a beautiful car that's it for now. So what are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments. Stay tuned at the electric arena for all the latest Tesla and electric vehicle news.